Hey everybody, an interesting competition problem here. Let me relabel this parenthetical quantity. Let's just call it capital A. Capital A is just what's inside the parentheses here, this complex number. Now it's conjugates right over here. We'll just go ahead and call it B. All right, now this looks pretty much impossible uh, given the size ends a natural number. And so we're supposed to evaluate F at 1960. Now the way we've relabeled this, that's just the same thing as saying um, A to the 360 uh, plus B to the 360, or 1960, excuse me. Okay, plus uh, B to the 1960. Now, at first blush, it really looks like what, uh, really? You know, Wolfram algebra, uh, but uh, anyway, let's get it copied down here, 1960. All right, now, there's some things that save us a lot of work here if you look carefully. These things turn out to be the tenth roots of unity, and I'll show you that in a moment. But notice that the modulus of the first number, that is its distance from the origin, uh, we'll use just the standard absolute value uh, notation here. Uh, the modulus of the complex number A is the square root of the sum of the squares. All right, and that's exactly what I've written down right here for you folks. Okay. Uh, now, you'll see why I color-coded it in just a minute, but if you go through the arithmetic for A, uh, the modulus of A, you'll see that you get one, okay? And again, I won't, I won't go, that's, that's kind of fun, but what that means is that this is a complex number that lies on the unit circle, so that makes it what they call a root of unity. Now, in a similar fashion, since B is just its a conjugate, we'll also get that the modulus of B, and I'll just write that. I'm not going to do the work, of course. It's just a difference of a sign there, and it gets squared anyway. Okay, so the modulus of B is also equal to 1. So they're both roots of unity. Okay, now and now here's the skyhook. It turns out these come from a so-called nice angle. You can prove this. Pi over 5 is, uh, let's see, 180 divided by 5 is 36 degrees if you need to. If it's really not that important. But what is important here is that the cosine of pi over 5 is exactly the real part, and then the sine of pi over 5 is the imaginary part, okay? And uh, so now another thing that is important, notice that um, <clears throat> 2 pi, which is the number of radians measuring a circle, divided by pi over 5 is certainly 10. Okay, in other words, that means that there's 10 arc lengths corresponding to angles that correspond to the roots of unity. All right, so this is just 10. And I, it's 10 roots of unity. We are only interested in two of them here, but there's 10 of them equally spaced. Now, I'll draw a rough little sketch here to motivate it a little bit further and convince you. But... Um, Anyway, 10 roots of unity, we, we have two of them, it turns out. So let's, let's see if we can draw a picture of the unit circle that, that makes a little bit of sense here. Um, so this is the imaginary axis up here. Uh, this is the real axis down here. All right, so here's our circle, unit circle. And now, just to orient, just to get oriented here, uh, one zero one is certainly a root of unity for anything, right? So we have uh, that's one zero right there. One comma zero. Now there's four roots of unity with one zero zero i. That's a horrible circle in it. Uh, minus one zero and then zero minus i. Okay. Now, so what we have here is I'll call this this terminal point. I won't try to label it, but this would be pi over five here, a little bit less than pi over four. Okay. And nine pi over five would be the very same number, except it would be the uh, you know the additive inverse for the y coordinate or for the imaginary piece. All right. So this is nine pi over five, right? 
which is one fifth less than two over pi. So that's the location of these values. Uh, in fact, well, let me be a little more careful. Um, right up here, see how we have minus, let me just label it in here for you. This particular angle would correspond to pi over five radians. Pi divided by five radians. And then this would be nine pi, you see, down in quadrant four, nine pi over five. Okay. That's the only difference because the minus sign right here is the only difference between the two. This makes it co complex conjugates and it relocates this point in quadrant four. Okay. So you see what that means is that we know at this stage, since there's 10 roots of unity, that means all of them raised to the 10th power is equal to one. Okay. And so what we can conclude right here, and this is kind of cool. I like this. That means that a to the 10th, Uh, equals to b to the 10th equals to 1. That's what we mean by the 10th roots. It comes from DeMoff's theorem also, I think, if you want to go back and look at why it's true. But anyway, this is certainly true, but guess what? We can rewrite this as a to the 10th power raised to the 196th power. Isn't that sweet? Remember, you multiply exponents here, so 196 times 10 is certainly 1960. And in a similar fashion for B, B to the 10th uh, raised to 1960. And this is just properties of exponents. And so guess what? This whole thing craps out into since uh, a and b to the 10th are equal to 1, this just sums up to 2. And that completes the problem, folks. I wish I could figure out a way to keep everything on the same screen. I think it's just kind of impossible, really. I want to make it right big enough to where you can see. But anyway, the answer to the question is 2. And uh, the, the sky hook really here is knowing that cosine of pi over 5 is this. The real common, you know, uh, square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half, those are three, three roots of unity. And these are a little bit more uncommon, but this is something you can prove geometrically. It's not one of the so-called nice angles, but it's close to being nice. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope this, uh, this part right here motivated the fact that they are 10th roots of uni unity. These are, that's a piss poor picture, but I think you get the point. Uh, one zero right there, and then pi over five, and then nine over pi over five down here. Nine pi over five is by symmetry is gonna give you the negative coordinate you want right here. That is, um, and again, maybe I'm going a little too far with this, but this would be a plus sign for the x coordinate and then a minus sign for the y coordinate or the imaginary coordinate. And of course, right up here, these are both, this is both plus plus, but they're the same numerical values. They're just located in um, the same magnitudes, just different signs, okay? But anyway, folks, I think that gets the job done. Uh, this is the final answer. Let me know what you thought.